guys, it's Casey Cole Corbin with Dynamic Fluid Art Coaching starting today's webinar, uh, perhaps the webinar that you have been waiting on. Uh, this is uh, number five, but it is uh, uh, we're going to do number two tomorrow. Um, so we got one more to go. So number five is, is uh, when no one tells you about how to get sponsored so you can get free paint and other supplies. So I will uh, talk to you about um, that. If you haven't already, there is a 12 page handout. <laughs> and that's, you know, the not using large letters. <laughs> you may have noticed um, as you sign on here that um, uh, I'm pretty conservative in nature. And so that includes in the printing. And so I don't use like big blocks of color, that kind of thing. Um, so that when you're printing them, you don't burn through an ink cartridge <laughs> if you choose to um, uh, print them. So I am. Uh, uh, just checking my tech here, and so I need you to do that for me too by uh, commenting that you are here. And we did figure out um, that you do need to opt in with StreamYard. And here's I'll show you this on the spanner is if you go to StreamYard.com backslash Facebook, give them permission to show your name. That's something that you do once, and then um, then then from what I understand, from then and forevermore, you are. Um, uh, going to be able to be displayed with your name and your, um, you know, uh, uh, your profile picture. Yeah. So it used to be that all that happened automatically with these kind of services. And then, you know, the whole fiasco with um, uh, Facebook and sharing information and, you know, all that became now, okay, well, now we got to get permission to be able to do that. So it's kind of a useless hassle, you know, I think. So um, if you'll do that, that will enable me to be able to see who I'm speaking to at the time. So if you need that, just go to that link there. All right. My phone, did y'all ever do this? My phone is delayed, you know, in this. I've been broadcasting for two minutes It's and I'm still not on there yet. So let me try going to see you guys live on another page. Nope, that's not showing me there yet either. All right. So hopefully that will soon. Let's try refreshing. Hopefully that doesn't pull away all the power needed. But all right, so I'm on uh, quite a few minutes uh, early. So I usually get on about five minutes early. This time I'm getting on about six minutes early. So it wouldn't surprise me if nobody's on here yet. All right. Okay, I am. All right, good. Jess, there you are. Jess, you're, you, I really want you to win because you're like the most dependable. <laughs> you're like the first on here. You're on my <laughs> announcement lives. Uh, so that's great. Uh, Leah, I see you there. All right. And Diane and Wendy. All right. So I see you guys there. So if you can, uh, thanks for saying hello. Um, uh, if you can tell me that you can hear me, that would be great. And then have you downloaded the uh, uh handout yet because this is this is the one right here it is packed with information it is 12 pages long and so it's going to have a, a quite a bit of content there for you that i know you're going to want to look at you may or may not choose to print it um but uh you'll definitely want to have it up like on the screen there and some things i'd really like for you and i'll repeat this here in a few minutes whenever um uh, after the start time is, is if you could tell me um uh, how do you best learn and not only just learn but implement um, insights like the kind of things that we've been sharing to you know during this webinar do you do that you know you can put in a number one if it's uh, that you study by yourself or two is if you can if you would would implement and do the things that we're talking about if you are more supported by other people and so if you learn and grow in a group that encourages you and can support you by holding you accountable uh, to get all the steps done that you say that you're going to do. I was going to tell you what to do, but whatever you say that you're going to do uh, according to your long range strategy plan. So that's a uh, mouthful, but um, that's really in, in uh, essence what a mastermind group does, what a, what an accountability group does for us is, is that we can, um, we can submit masterminds traditionally have something called 10 40 10 plan where you um, this won't exactly be the structure that will be offered in the uh, the new uh, membership group that um, that I'm offering the uh, 
what it is is like 10 minutes is like a positive check-in what's been going on right you know since we've seen each other in the last month and then 40 minutes typically we would um, hot seat somebody or love seat somebody and we would really just help them focus on them focus on their their direction now you know the ideal size for a mastermind group is like between three and six eight you know the most 12 and so it's a um, they're they're really the most ideal situation is is that they you're meeting with the same people week after week and so you're rotating right and so who's in that hot seat so you get your turn uh, coming up and that's usually scheduled in advance and people have homework and stuff to have ready and then everybody gives them input on that all right and so I attend those myself so that's what a little bit about a mastermind just kind of um, uh, for you those of you that arrived um, early so I got um, uh, start time just now so let's see who we got um, on here now so if you guys could be answering that question for me if you haven't pulled up the handout that would be really good to do today because it is it is packed all right so you're gonna want to be able to look at that and look back on that and have that as a resource for you all right great okay all right just as Casey you're excited about this topic all right great all right and Diane and there's Kathy. All right. And uh, let's see, it's kind of blurbed all in there together. So it says Autumn is in here too. All right. Um, very good. And some other people. So I'm, I'm multitasking. I'm looking on my phone um, at this. And then I'm also looking for comments here in the um, StreamYard. We're using StreamYard again because of the super cool banners. So. If you have uh, the, the banner that's going across right now, the bottom there, if you were um, either skipped or weren't offered an opportunity to be able to submit this, then you can use that. You can copy and paste that or go to that. And my understanding is for uh, you do that once and then you don't ever have to do that again. So it's just one of those probably, you know, Facebook getting around legalities, just liability kind of stuff, you know, there. So great. All right. Hey, Vanessa, how are you doing? I can see your name on there happy friday it is a happy friday yes <laughs> this has been a week i have really enjoyed this week um but uh with the surgery and uh, all the prep work and stuff to be able to do these webinars um daily it has been a week <laughs> i've enjoyed everything except for the surgery i've enjoyed it thoroughly but um <laughs> it has been um it, i'm glad it's friday all right but it's kind of not my friday since tomorrow we will do we'll do a makeup day for the webinar that was on saturday which i think is kind of cool because there's always people that can't attend during the week because of work and so maybe some uh, new people will be able to join us tomorrow because it's saturday and so we'll be able to see them then so that'll be cool that'll be fun too all right okay victoria all right victoria marie and veronica perkins okay i see you there very good but I can't see who you are on the stream yard. And so if you can use that link, uh, it's not super important um, to do that. It'll just be, be help me, especially with my name difficulties, to be able to um, see who I'm talking to there. All right. Well, I got about three minutes after. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and get started and we're going to we're going to share our screen. And so this is the handout that is available to you on the special group that you're watching this. I posted it today. So if you just scroll down a little bit or go to the file section, all of the handouts for all five handouts, including number two that I'll do tomorrow, will be available in this group for one week. And so they'll be here until midnight of Saturday, the 11th, and then everything goes away, okay? Uh, tomorrow at midnight, a very special offer is going to go away. And so I'll be telling you about that um, <laughs> a little bit later in our presentation, okay? So today's topic is called, uh, what no one tells you about how to get sponsored so that you can get free paint and other supplies. And uh, I'm pretty sure that I've met everybody so far, but this is Casey Goldcorb, I'm a coach, I'm a counselor, I'm an artist, and I'm an art teacher. And I coach people on how to do um, all of those things um, above. <laughs> Very good. Uh, and so the replay for these videos will be available for a short period of time. We just talked about that. But um, and please share this group, but share this link that I'm showing you now. The uh, that's my 22 social app. Um, 
uh, and it, it requires that people go in and give me an email address and then click a, uh, a check a box so that I can private message them too. And so that's um, I would appreciate you sharing that. Please don't share the directly to the to this group that we're on right now, but the webinar group. Other groups that you can share freely uh, in groups wherever is um, my what selling group and the teachers of flow group. Those things have been uh, free and will continue to be, and they have been for about a year and a half. Started them after I got fired and really needed to ramp up to be able to um, uh, take this uh, teaching of fluid art to provide for our full-time income. So and those groups have grown to have over 11,000 members in them. So that's really amazing, isn't it? Okay. Uh, well, here's what I'd like for you to comment now. You can put in a number one or a number two in response to this question. And that'll kind of help me know what direction to take this webinar, okay? One is, is um, uh, well, the question is, how would you best learn, but, but learn in a, in a way that you implement the insights that we've been sharing this week, okay? We we'll probably need to talk about overwhelm here a little bit. I have been getting, I mean, our first handout was six pages. It's grown to now 12 pages. It is, there is a, a lot of information on there. And my intention is not to overwhelm you, but actually to kind of point out that it's not really information that you lack. It's really something that I call SAS structure, accountability, and support. SAS enables us to accomplish things. When we have a SAS team, I call them a structure accountability support team, which is the mastermind group so that we'll be doing in the, uh, in the next level of um, teachers. They hold us accountable to be able to accomplish more than we could on our own. And so number two, if you one, number one is I like to study by myself and do everything alone. All right. <laughs> I hope you don't put number one in there. But number two is, is that uh, option that you can put into the chat is to learn and grow in a group that encourages you, helps support you um, by holding you accountable to get the steps done that you said that you're going to do. Nobody's going to tell you what to do, but they're going to, whatever you say, okay, this is what I want to accomplish in the next 30 days. And then people will hold you accountable as far as asking you, hey, did you get that done? Did you meet with that venue? Did you send out those letters? Did you do that stuff, right? You know, the work. And all of that should be in your strategy plan that you and I meet together and uh, do. And so that's, uh, uh, I'd love to get, see some number ones and number twos. Great. I'm glad, glad to see that some number twos there <laughs> in there. Um, otherwise, all this information, particularly the 12 page handout that we're doing today, it can be extremely overwhelming. All right. Here's what we'll be doing all week. Number one was how to stand out and seriously establish yourself as a selling artist. Number two, that's going to be tomorrow will be the three tactics of how to make more than a thousand dollars teaching flow art in a half day workshop. Uh, number three is what we did on Wednesday is smart strategies to develop pricing structures that reach new students and maximizes profits. Uh, yesterday we did supercharge your social media efforts to book out your classes and now today will be what no one tells you about how to get sponsored so that you can get free paint and other supplies and as like I said if you watch the little um, reminders hey we're going live in an hour <laughs> on several of the groups is that it's really amazing to me when I thought about it that I have not spent a dime on paint or pouring medium and many other things in over a year. And I mean, I paint all the time. And of course, I teach classes in which, you know, all my students are using these things up. So I, it has literally added thousands and thousands of dollars to my bottom line. I remember one time I turned in a what I consider an, what I thought was just an average size order. I'm sponsored by DecoArt. And it got rejected because the retail value of the order that I had placed exceeded $3,000. And I'm like, wow, I got to be bumping up pretty close to that <laughs> month after month. So you run the math on that and you know, it has been worth thousands and thousands of dollars to me. And so getting sponsored is a great thing. And I think that you should definitely work on pursuing that. Now, you may have heard about people that have become sponsored, right? You know, and it's easy to see super cool people like Sandra Lett that has over 55 people, 55,000 followers on her YouTube channel. And, you know, and she has a gallery and she has a studio and she teaches people and she's a, she's a, she's a member of our teaching community, too. And so they think, OK, well, Sandra Lett, you know, she's awesome. You know, she could get sponsored and she is sponsored um, uh, like I am. But, uh, but not me. And I thought the same thing. And I disqualified myself and my thinking for quite a, quite a long time before I just kind of built up the courage to get on DecoArt's website and fill out the Helping Artists Program application. And lo and behold, I got sponsored. 
Now, it really amazed me, and I had to think that through, and I talked, you know, with, with the people there, you know, as far as how does this work, you know, exactly. And there's really two key areas that you want to have ready before you apply, um, and you, or if you apply um, or you pursue other companies for um, sponsoring, you want to know what they're looking for, preferably before you give them a proposal or you fill out their application if they have that kind of formal process. There's a, a lot of places do sponsoring that do not have a formal process. So uh, you need to kind of expand your thinking a little bit beyond just the ones that are kind of obvious, the ones that people talk about getting sponsored by. All right. Um, another great benefit to me has been is that uh, since it's free, I ordered a lot of other super cool products that I would have never gotten before. And so I got to play with them and I integrated them into my classes. So my students got to play with them too. It made me a much better teacher. Cool stuff like interference, uh, metallic luster and animals and also stencils and uh, textured mediums and even more. And so those are the things that I would not have um, pursued if uh, I hadn't been um, sponsored like that. But the biggest thing, of course, is, is that all that money that I saved in not buying paint and stuff meant more profit. All right. Um, it's helpful to understand what the art companies are looking for and give it to them. All right. So there's two main categories that I have found. Um, one is, is that you, you can be strong in just one, right, and ignore the other. Um, or you can be strong in both. Okay. So the first one is, is that they want you to be what's called a social influencer. And that means that you have a, a number of followers in several different social media outlets. And I was really blessed. And I told you yesterday about the crazy runaway <laughs> um, viral video that I had on YouTube in response to that haven't been seen over 200,000 times. Also, I've got over 4,000 subscriptions because of that. And that was just a fluke of the algorithm on Facebook and the algorithm on YouTube, which our competitors just happened to link and cause an infinity loop. And all of a sudden I got all these um, in some ways, artificial views. This is the best way that I've been able to understand what's happened. It happened because I was just really curious, so I looked into it. But um, uh, also, you know, like I said, I've built up these other groups, and so that's important. You know, they know that uh, if you're a social influencer, it means that the things that you do, um, other people follow. And so I try to honor that too by taking pictures that also have real good product placement for Deco Art. You know, it's, uh, their labels are seen, and it's there in the background of the foreground. Um, you know, I am very, I'm, I'm a naturally grateful person anyway, and so I'm very grateful to them and I want them to be, you know, get more bang for the buck with their, <laughs> with their advertising, you know, spending their money on me. And so uh, I feel very blessed and so I want them to be blessed too. So, all right. Hey, Beth, I see you there. All right, Jamie. All right. And uh, Sandy. Okay. And Nan, you're there. Hope you're able to stay with us. <laughs> and Cynthia. Okay. All right. Great. Nice to see all those twos, too. All right. Hey, Gina, you snuck in. All right. <laughs> and Joyce. All right. Very, very good. All right. So um, social influencer is, is one of the criteria. And so if you just take, um, you know, like what Sandra uh, Lett has done for years, or, well, the, just barely plural years, you know, doing a YouTube video a day, that's a social influencer, right? Um, but also, if you're going to teach, and you don't have to necessarily be a social influencer to have this, but they, um, they want you teaching unique students. And so let's say that you kind of set up in a section of town and you get the same people coming to your class month after month after month. Honestly, you know, why should they continue to sponsor you? They could sponsor you for one class. Everyone will have seen the products and then they've got their, you know, <laughs> they got their marketing dollars, you know, out of you for that. And so you have to prove, and more and more they're tightening up on that, that you are having unique students. And so the easiest way to do that is to travel. And so when you, like I do, when I go around to different towns and different stuff, you know, they're pretty much guaranteed that they're going to get different um, students each time. So they want to know that we are reaching more people, uh, different people than just the same group month after month after month. I always just go by the adage, you know, under promise and over deliver. So I'm always doing things um, to be grateful to Deco Art, uh, like I mentioned, posting and sharing things there. Okay. All right. So here's the let's let's break that down. Okay. So I've got a five step process of getting sponsored. We're always going to start, you know, I've been a counselor for 20 years and do life coaching. So we're always going to start off with mindset. Everything starts with a needed adjustment in our mindset. 
think of it this way now. Okay, this might be hard for some of you, but you have something the company wants. That's access to your students. This is not a charity, all right? So some of you may have like, you know, uh, approached you know, maybe for your church or Cub Scouts or something like that. And so you've gone to try to go to companies to try to get them to give you stuff or money or whatever. And so you tell a real sad story or how needy these children are or whatever. <laughs> that is not going to help you in this case, all right? So this is business. So have the right mindset going in. What do you have to bargain with? Okay, so with the business, then everything is going to be uh, a bargain, you know, a give and take. Um, you have a target audience, uh, potential customers in your hand, meaning that they're coming to your classes, especially in the niche of flow art. Um, have you wandered around um, our stores recently? Both Michaels and Hobby Lobby here have um, uh, different companies doing uh, in-cap displays, which I know are very expensive for them, of flow art. Right, stuff that's already made up and ready. So our stuff has gone mainstream now, which is good for us. The awareness and the fact that we can now teach people that are knowledgeable, you know, about flow art, um, and we can teach them how to use products that are a whole lot less expensive <laughs> than those things that are on the end cap there. But that's pretty cool. That's neat. You know, we're we're we have not um, rode this this crested this wave yet. The trend is continuing to grow in the uh, arena here of flow fluid art, all right? Um, but, you know, they know that we're going to be teaching people who want to buy their products. And so a real good uh, opportunity for you is the next time you see some products that particularly are made for flow art is uh, take your camera into the uh, store with you, take a picture of the label and go home and uh, contact them and say, I teach flow art and uh, I would like for you to sponsor me, right? They may be so new that they haven't even considered doing uh, a program that's like um, established that uh, like Deco Art does for um, uh, you know the Helping Artist program, right? They got all that streamlined. They know what their systems are. They know how to, you know you got a lockstep process of going through that. But maybe they don't. So you give them a proposal. Say, here's what I want. You know, you ship me X amount of product, and I'm going to get you X amount of students exposed to your product um, on a monthly annual basis. All right. So don't be afraid if they don't have a system in place, you can help them create that. You can offer them a solution, right? They have a problem. They need to reach more people that are interested in their product. You have the solution, okay? All right, um, and just make it worth their while to ship you those products. All right, so these five steps will help you get sponsors, win them over, and build a long-lasting relationship. You're gonna find a current theme in all five of these webinars is Casey is into connections. <laughs> It's not what who, what you know, it's who you know, is you got to connect with people and then nurture that relationship and keep that going, whether that's your customers that you're selling art to, or in this case, sponsors that you want to sponsor you. So the first thing to do is do a brainstorming exercise of just creating a list of ideal sponsors. And so sponsors want to reach out to people who can become loyal customers. To do that, they need you to partner with them um, with products and services that your attendees will want. And let me tell you, I've found this to be true. Um, after my classes, um, you know, I, uh, I invite my students to join my Facebook page, my Facebook group for my students. And they are frequently posting later that day the very same spread of products that they used with me today, Deco Arts products. So it works for them. This is smart of them to do it this way. They are buying what they learned on, and you can do that too. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, Good, so I also want you to think beyond the paint. Um, canvases, alternative to canvases, easels, aprons, and other art, art supplies, they can also, you can also get a sponsor to be able to help you with that. So here in your handout is just uh, an opportunity to be able to start off the list. Think outside the paint box, like venues, all right? Organizations and places that want your student to come to their facility and be a part of what they do, churches, garden clubs, other organizations, art stores like Hobby Lobby, they want you to get your client avatar, which is also their client avatar or their ideal client or customer to come to their facility. And so they can, most of the time I'm playing, um, my art center's 30%, you know, they're keeping 30% for doing a lot of work. I don't mind doing that. Accessing their list, like we talked about on day one. 
However, um, you know, there it, it could, the case could also be made for why they need to let you um, do your stuff for free, you know, or other locations or clubs or places that have, you know, churches, for example, and stuff should not charge you because once they come in the door, they have a tendency to come back through that door. All right. So just more opportunity to brainstorm for different ways of sponsoring than maybe you've considered before. Before you approach companies to sponsor your event, contact them to see who makes that sponsoring decision. All right, it might be the PR manager, a dedicated sponsorship manager, or the owner of the company. Save this information for later, but don't really reach out to them quite yet. You've got a little bit more work to do before you do your pitch. Now that you've built your list and organized your prospects into a spreadsheet, include the following columns to help you to track the sponsor outreach efforts, okay? So you might want to build a little spreadsheet or just do it on paper. Is the company, the decision maker, the contact that you have made so far, meeting that you might have booked and that can count, um, you know, uh, phone calls, emails, other types of connections, the proposals or applications that you may have submitted and also your follow-up meeting and what was the outcome of that. Step number two is, is how to craft a sponsorship proposal. All right. Companies want to re a return on their investment. When crafting your sponsorship proposal, come prepared with data. All right. Now, they, how do they know that they want to sponsor you? Your student data is what sh is your opportunity to be sponsored. All right. So you got to know who your client avatar is, who you mostly reach. How can you find that out? Well, it's easy on your ticket or your registration, um, you know, your attendance records to be able to show um, who these people are. You, you don't share specific information with them. You share aggregate information as far as like age, gender, income, you know, the what they typically do, that type of stuff. Right. They want to know that they're reaching people that can afford to buy their products. And it's another reason why you don't approach them for kids. If you work with kids, you're going to get absolutely nowhere. Um, my sister-in-law, Autumn Orozco, is on here. Maybe she can attest to that. She's tried applying. She, she, um, she teaches only children, and um, she can't get sponsored by a company because, one, is children don't make the decision. Their parents do. And so they want to reach out to um, adults only. I have not found any organization that sponsors. Even in the um, seconds program, uh, they will not give you paint um, for children because they feel like that there's a liability for them too. So there's two reasons to not try to approach them um, with uh, you, you telling them that you're working with children. Don't do it. Okay, you won't get anywhere. All right, um, your demographics, your sponsor wants to know about the audience's age, gender, location, but you can go even deeper with their education level, the job titles, uh, the income to show their purchasing power. Now, um, most companies do not want you to use, now we just talked about that with children, um, and if you're demonstrating products so that people can see them, they want you to be demonstrating them to people that have the ability to be able to make the decision to buy. Um, so also non-attendee demographics, that means gathering information about the vendor, the media um, of your event, um, that it's going out to other people other than just the ones that it attend, right? So there might be closer to a 95 to 5% ratio of the people that you're reaching with your marketing versus the 5% that actually show up to your classes, all right? Well, that marketing still has value, particularly if you um, include the company's information in your marketing. So uh, is your venue, venue prestigious? Will it draw high-end consumers, right? Examples are art centers, art museums, or even re retreat locations, good. All right, social media action. Track where, when, and how often your workshop and classes are mentioned on websites, blogs, social network, or news sites. Additionally, does your product or your company name, name get uh, does their product or company name get seen in your marketing? So that's something you could do just in the way that you do product placement in your pictures. Or it could also be that you change the name of your event to include it. Now, every year for the last 10 years, I've participated, my wife and I have participated in something called Spring Into the Arts. It's an art competition here in Vadasa, Georgia, put on by Turner Center for the Arts. And uh, once I won first place in sculpture of all things, I was absolutely amazed, right? They, they, they give thousands of dollars of awards <laughs> every year for this thing. And one time I ran the math, I was like, the number of people here and the number, number of entries, right? 
it would only came up to about eleven thousand dollars. And even if I just went, you know, the half, more than half of that went to prizes. And so I'm like, how in the world? I knew the food cost because I used to be a caterer. Um, definitely exceeded, you know, better than five or six thousand dollars. And so I didn't understand how are they doing this? So they're just doing this out of the kindness of their heart. You know, <laughs> what is the deal here? Well, I befriended the uh, executive director uh, and she told me uh, just this last year that um, they this year they got fifty five thousand dollars in sponsorship. OK, that needs to uh, our eyes need to become open to the real opportunity of sponsorship here. OK, I'm not doing all this yet. All right. But I'm starting to see it. I'm starting to work on it. All right. You've seen it. Gold, silver, bronze companies. They get their uh, company name on vinyl letters uh, on the wall um, that are taken down in a couple months um, and also their name in the brochure. And that's what they get for their fifty five thousand dollars. Why? Because the elite of this area are coming to that event. They are getting their name in front of just the right people and they're willing to pay big dollars for that. They're not being generous. <laughs> no, this is uh, or charitable. No, uh, this is business. Right. And they're doing well by sponsoring that way. How can you get on the other end of that receiving that sponsorship deal? Right. Um, so maybe you're now starting to see the real power in playing the sponsorship game right. So could you consider being sponsored, but not just by products or even the venue, but instead money? Listen, you do a lot of marketing. You could include the company name and their products. Um, this is not only advertisements for them, but it's also highly targeted, laser focused marketing to their ideal customer. You, if you prove that you are reaching their ideal customer, that can be worth a lot. All right. Step number three is connect with event sponsors. All right. Um, you've done the background work to find them. And now it's your opportunity to approach each company for sponsors, sponsorship. As you begin to reach out, follow these steps. Number one, draft a elevator pitch, all right? You've heard of that before, your elevator speech, right? Um, two or three lines about yourself and what you do. The idea there is if somebody asks you what you do in the elevator and you only have a minute to share, can you tell them, you know, in a very concise way, you know, what you do? And so you tell them, you know, about your classes or your workshops that you're organizing. The value to the potential sponsor and also a request for a short, for a short meeting, either in person or more likely on the phone or email. Practice delivering this pitch. So if you find yourself in the presence of a prospect or on the phone, you can say something like, I help people to reduce negative stress through creative expression using the fascinating art trend of fluid art and workshop classes and corporate training. So that's mine, right? You know, I just did a corporate training last week uh, using some fluid art too. So. Connect with prospects. As you approach potential customers, your goal to, is to get to the very next step. All right, I want you to, to view switch. All right, think about it from their point of view. Their job at each stage along the way is to screen you out. Keep that in mind. They're looking for some reason to screen you out. Your job then in each stage of the way, uh, each step of the way, is to not get screened out, but to just make it to the very next step. Just focus on that. Connecting with sponsors by attending events, interacting on social media, reaching out on LinkedIn, complete, uh, completing applications or sending email. If they have a formal sponsorship program uh, and an online application, then it's so easy. All right. Great. Do it. But maybe it's too easy. Maybe everybody's doing it. Maybe you also need to consider reaching out to companies that don't make it that easy. Maybe even companies that have not even considered sponsoring before. And begin talking with them, begin that connection, begin that relationship, nurture that relationship, show them that you could be very valuable to uh, as part of their marketing. Good. Follow up kindly. Hey, decision makers, they're really, really busy. So if they say, if they haven't said no, right, and you haven't heard back from them yet, show respect for their time and keeping it brief and to the point. Reiterate your value statement, ask them if you can meet, call, email, um, or if an application can be considered. I got to tell you, I put out my application and I or did the application. I didn't hear from them from weeks and weeks and weeks. I just kind of shrugged my shoulders and kind of said, well, I didn't think they were going to improve me anyway. <laughs> and then lo and behold, uh, much longer than I thought it should take, 
I got an a email saying you are approved. And I said, what? All right. So ask potential sponsors about how they measure success and then cherry pick the information that's important to them. Most likely take notes about what they, they want to, uh, to you to customize in your proposal. So if they're looking for this and this, then don't include that and that. All right. So customize cherry pick what you have to offer as far as what they are looking for. I found, as we already talked about, that most either focus on either or both social media presence or um, who your average students are. Let's talk a little bit more about that, okay? One is uh, being a social media influencer. It, that'll be on their application. It'll ask you how many followers you have, how often you post, um, you know, and if you don't have any or don't have much, you know, this doesn't necessarily disqualify you, but it will really limit you from the certain types of sponsorship. And so you might want to consider starting to build your tribe, starting to build your email list, starting to build your get the participation in your groups and on your pages, those kind of things. All right. Um, and then the other category is unique qualified students. Remember, see this across their forehead. What's in it for me written across their forehead. All right. Um, as you're talking with them, they're going to be constantly looking for, you know, as I'm answering this question and how I'm handling, you know, this conversation, I've got to prove that it's worth it to them to sponsor me. Again, not charity, business. If you're teaching the same group of ladies month after month, then why would the comp company sponsor you more than once, right? So one time, um, one time and your students have been exposed to their products um, in a favorable light and that's it. You must demonstrate that you are serving a unique audience by traveling or reaching other people, people groups and be able to prove that. Um, if they're just coming to your same studio, the same group, that's a little harder to prove. Okay, so traveling is a little bit easier for particularly if you're a startup and you don't have your own space. Good. All right, step number four, design your event and attract sponsors. Once a sponsor is interested, it's time to apply or craft a sponsorship package that reflects both the sponsor and your event's brand. Okay, well, now we're gonna talk about branding a little bit here. What is your branding, All right? Who are you, your company? Mine is Dynamic Fluid Art. And so, you know, mine's a little bit more than just the art. It's also an experience because of my uh, doing counseling and teaching meditation, that type of stuff, you know, is that I include those. So mine's a little bit more of an experience just than learning the art process. What's your, that's my brand, what's your brand? And how could you customize your brand or customize your event to be something that they are looking for? What, you know, to meet their objectives, how they, what, what the goals that the company is trying to achieve, right? And then they could end up paying you, you know, for that. Get them excited, create maybe a one of a kind event with a, uh, experiential marketing campaign. For example, um, some of you are familiar with Windsor and Newton's um, products. And so let's say that we're trying to approach them as being a sponsor. At the Windsor and Newton Dynamic Fluid Art Workshop in Napa Valley, wineries host areas with hardwood floors, chandeliers, and white leather couches in which their patrons can sit back and sip wines while experiencing the flow art sensation. You can see there's a group that that would appeal to, all right? Finally, step number five is build a long-term relationship to keep your sponsors. So one is, is that you got some, if you get accepted, you got to keep that relationship going. Um, I do very, uh, I continually post uh, about Deco Art. I include them, uh, I tag them. A very easy way to do that is to tag them in your social media. And they are appreciative of that, all right? Um, <laughs> that will get you favor uh, with them. But let's say you're rejected, okay? Let's say, nope, well, we're not going to accept you. Then how do you respond? Here's a suggestion for you. You respond something like this. I'm growing fast. In fact, in fact, I'm in a paid membership program to accelerate my growth. So while I might not meet your criteria just yet, I'm on track to in the future. Let me make sure that I understand your objectives so I know what to focus on. You want my classes to be of blank minimum size. You want me to have a minimum social media presence by having fill in the blank of uh, subscribers on YouTube, Facebook, pages and groups, Instagram, and other social media. Maybe they want to, you know, or do you want to validate, you know, the quality of my work uh, as an artist? You know, how do you want that validated? Do you want to see awards, contest win, competitions, being juried? Um, and you want to call, maybe you want to validate the quality of my teaching. Um, how do you want that to be validated by um, student survey results, the art center, um, education director making 
a recommendation letter, et cetera. This is part of the vetting process. Remember, view switch with them, see things from their point of view. Every stage along the way, they're trying to screen you out. And so you want to know why you just got screened out if you got rejected, right? So you know what to work on. Um, people are people and they're usually generally kind. And so you usually can approach them and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm not going to give up. You know, um, I'm going to come back to you next year. I want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row. You know, tell me where did I not meet your criteria this time, please. Right. Satisfy the needs of your sponsor. They will keep coming back to build exciting experiences that attendees love. Use this to strengthen your relationship with the sponsors. Once a proposal has been accepted or your application has been accepted and you're now into a sponsorship program, make a checklist. Go through everything that's on their website and so that you can keep the promises that you made. Right? They all have different criteria. Um, it's a little too hard to keep that in mind. Just make an easy checklist so that when you're at your event, you're, you're teaching, you can look at your checklist and go, oh, okay, check, 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 check. Oop, I forgot to take pictures today. I, um, with DecoArt, they want you um, submitting pictures of students using their products and so that they can verify that. That's completely fair. Keep your sponsors informed and involved leading up to this event. Tagging in social media is really easy and it's an extremely trackable way to uh, for them to track and for you to track. Stay flexible. If a small adjustment to the plans can ben benefit your sponsor or without a cost to you, then just make it with a smile, right? Recently, DecoArt sent me a big old stack of survey forms to be completed by my students. That wasn't something that was part of our arrangement in the last year, but no problem to me. I'll pass them out. <laughs> fill, fill these out too, please, right? Uh, be generous and appreciative when preparing for a class using their products. Uh, before my class, I pause and I take pictures with um, good product placement and I post them everywhere, including tagging DecoArt in. All right. Share your data about the results of your sponsoring event, your impressions gained, your brand uh, mentions, your sales, your leads generated. Although um, uh, DecoArt now has a student survey, I've always had one. And so when my students complete my comments on the products that I have passed out or the information, I, excuse me, I pass that along to the company. I always pass it along to DecoArt. Even negative comments about their product. Um, they have told me that they have passed that along to their product development um, department. And those of you know, um, DecoArt has been um, developing products specifically for the porn industry. And so, especially in the beginning, we had some suggestions. <laughs> me and my students had some suggestions for them, and they said they passed that along. Good. All right. I said it before, your student data is your sponsoring opportunity. Keep that in mind. You need, you need to have an awareness and you need to know what your client avatar is and sharing that with um, different companies, um, you know, because there's, there's some companies that want uh, certain people, right, reached and there's some that, do, that don't, right? You know, they want to avoid certain demographics. And so you just being open and honest with them, say this is who I attract or this is who I'm going after, right? can create a really good opportunity for you. Um, do you ever wonder while, when you're taking a professional survey, um, I know you've filled out hundreds of them in your lifetime, right? Why they ask for demographic information. Um, they want to know your age, income, occupation, gender, et cetera. They need that information to target their marketing efforts. So include that in your survey or at least be able to describe your client avatar. With uh, thoughtful research and coordination, um, that those are just the key to be able to get event sponsors and to be able to keep them coming back for more. Okay. So those are the five steps. Uh, just two days ago, I opened up the cart or gate to open up the door to this opportunity um, that I made the real big announcement, right? And so I'm just going to remind you guys of that today. And then I'm going to talk to you about a really cool special opportunity in just a few minutes about how you can be a part of the um, teachers group for the rest of your life and never pay a dime. Okay. Um, so I've opened the cart and so we've had some people enroll um, already and that's great. That's exciting. Um, and that the whole thing, the door is going to be open and then it's going to close next Saturday. All right. And so um, next Saturday on the 11th at midnight, boom, if you have not got into this program, you are too late <laughs> and the doors will be closed. Now, this Saturday, tomorrow at my midnight, there's going to be another opportunity that's going to close. And so I want you guys to jump on there real quick. If you're considering joining the accelerator program, you need to move. All right. We have eight slots left. And so they're getting eaten up quick. Um, 
This free community, this free group and the community group that you're already a member of will remain the same. So most of you guys are part of the free group and the, or some of you guys are part of the community group and that's not going to change, right? But this third level is going to help you go further, farther, faster in building your business. The monthly membership fee will do two very important things. One is you got a little skin in the game and people invest in what they invest in, all right? And then two, the income for me will allow me to dedicate more time and energy and resources and helping you. And now this time with an individual attention. So, so far I have not been, that's not been part of the uh, package of the other offering. Uh, I've been doing strategy sessions and individual uh, coaching sessions, but not really as a part of the community group. So this is in some ways combining those two things together. So let's talk about the accelerated program. What do you get? For $197 a month with a six month commitment, you get, we're gonna start off with a strategy session. All right, so those of you that have enrolled, and I see some of you are on here right now, um, contact me, let's set up something for um, next week would be ideal. And we'll do, we'll meet and complete the strategy session and do that um, a really dynamic planning session um, that is valued at $300. Then every month um, thereafter, we're going to be doing a monthly individual individual coaching session with me. And so that's organized a uh, time of personal accountability. It gives really needed structure to your process while supporting you to methodically get from where you are to where you want to be. And um, I charge my clients uh, $175 a session all the time, every week. All right. Whether in person or um, online. Monthly mastermind groups, this will be the new component that will be offered um, is, is within this context. And this is going to be, it's a dynamic, interactive, small group held online. Um, I, again, I know that some, several of you guys that will be listening to this are in Australia and England and other parts of the world. Uh, it's okay. I'm up till 2 o'clock in the morning anyway. So we can, <laughs> I want to have several of these offered monthly. We'll do it uh, all around the time zone so that we can make sure that we get you serviced. Um, there, I promise you, are going to be the key. A year from now, when you look back, you're going to be like, "Man, that mastermind group was the best thing that has got me to where I want to be." And then the private community, and so you'll be admitted to the Teachers of Flow community group, which we've had going on since February. Um, one of the best things that I've heard from people on that group saying is that they don't feel alone anymore. There's a communal aspect of it. There's a mutuality in that we, uh, you know, are not just doing this by ourselves. And so you have a community of like-minded people that offer understanding and advice. And, um, and again, you know, we do not have to reinvent the wheel. We can be stubborn as creatives. So <laughs> let's not, not do that. We can, we can learn from each other the easy way instead of the, do it the smart way, not the hard way. And then the monthly coaching calls, which are themed webinars. They, um, many, uh, many different topics. Um, frequently there's several, I was reorganizing some things on there today. There is several look over the shoulder type screen shares of just how to use social media apps, other technologies. And then there's a big old um, Q and A session offered in that coaching call monthly. All right. You will have immediate access to the education vault, <laughs> what's called learning units on the, on this group. Um, the first one starts with lifestyle begin with the end in mind. Um, the real fun one is the uh, mini art, uh, spin art uh, lessons at fairs. Uh, online teaching is gonna be a focus that we focus on in the next two months a lot. And then uh, Hobby Lobby's free classroom, uh, lots of content in there. Marketing, how to get uh, students to your classes. Another unit's on productivity, how to get it all done. Um, uh, there's a section just for free lesson plans and themes that we share in there. So that's great, particularly when you're planning your stuff, particularly around the holidays or any holiday. And then um, how to get sponsored. And like we've been talking about today, but going a little bit further. And then also a party plan model is kind of uh, fun. Vanessa, um, has, although new to the group, she's brought that to us. So she's doing, a, she's got some experience in Pampered Chef. Um, say hi, Vanessa, to everybody. And then she's um, helping us to see a different paradigm with taking our classes into a party plan, very much like Pampered Chef, you know, or, or Tupperware or Avon, that kind of thing. And so uh, that's, that's really fascinating to think about. Um, I love that as creatives, we don't just have to be creative in the art but also the way that we do our business too. A great bonus is, is that uh, the teachers of flow business franchise in a box. And so you basically, if I was going to franchise my business, um, which I considered doing um, a year ago, <laughs> all the forms and processes and procedures, and literally uh, all you got to do is just do a finer place, you know, in your word document and bam, you're done, right? Print it. You're good. 
um, is all included in there. And so that is the link right there that says the www.22s on um, to get enrolled. And so um, had someone in, enroll again uh, less than an hour ago. So uh, jump on in there. And just to make sure, here's the special, special thing that we're going to do just until midnight tomorrow, that this is a no-brainer decision. I wanna, I'm want i offering you a special bonus for anybody before tomorrow at midnight is that you will get a lifetime membership to the community, which um, that price is, will be $39 a month. It's not right now, but uh, it will be $39 a month. And then everybody that enrolls in the accelerator membership until midnight tomorrow will be in the community group for free forever. And so those of you that have already enrolled, that includes you, Beth. <laughs> so don't don't send me pictures of you giving me ugly looks. <laughs> You're in. You got it for free. All right. <laughs> and that's the really big announcement. So um, we just immediately had people start sn snatching up these opportunities, get yours quickly. And you can do it before midnight tomorrow. Then you get whatever that would be worth. Right. Thirty nine dollars a month forever. All right. I will see you tomorrow for the what was supposed to be the second one which is the three tactics of how to make more than a thousand dollars teaching your flow art in a half day workshop. I'm going to look at uh, questions here in just a second. Before we do, let me go over your action steps with you is one is study and complete today's handout. And we got to counter that overwhelm because I know 12 pages, that's a lot. All right. But the way we do that is, you know, it's like the old expression, how, you know, can you eat an elephant? You know, yes. One bite at a time if you have enough freezer space, right? <laughs> so <laughs> one bite at a time, all right? And how do we keep on chomping? Well, accountability, structure, and support helps us with that. And so we counter that overwhelm by doing one thing at a time while being supported in the process. Read the emails that I send you and uh, share so that others can join us. It's not too late, they can even get caught up. They'll have all the way until next Saturday the 11th to watch the replays and then, um, click uh, this link that we just talked about to join the Accelerator membership program. All right. So right before we do the um, Q&A, let me go over to uh, we'll pick the winner. Sorry about this. Boop, boop, boop. All right. So this is my cool software. I'm going to choose the winner for today. And it's Nan. Hey, all right, Nan, you're on here. That's great. That's that's two days in a row that the person happened to be here. <laughs> so congratulations, Nan. Put in there. Woo, you won. And then uh, Nan, I'd like for you to private message me. I think we've already private messaged me before, but just send me your um, the address that you want, the free uh, art supplies that you just won uh, sent to. Okay. All right. So now I'm going to look at. Well, let's keep looking at Nan. That's fun. Uh, I'm going to look for any questions that were here. All right. Ooh, lots of participation. I might have to take my glasses off. All right. So Nan says, thank you. All right. Great. Congratulations to you. And hey, Sonny, enjoy. All right. <laughs> Camille is always working like three jobs. God bless her. All right. My wife's on here. Well, look at there. Mary Corbin's watching. Look at that. Everybody say hey to my wife, Mary. Isn't she pretty? Yep, she's a school teacher, so I don't know how she's doing that. All right. Uh, Joyce says, Hobby Lobby is where she teaches, and uh, she noticed that their sales have increased since we began teaching. Woo -woo -woo. All right, sorry. So that's the that's the win-win scenario. Yeah, yeah. I have the added bonus that my son manages. It works at Hobby Lobby full-time, and he manages the craft section there. And so before I teach, he makes sure I go and uh, inspect the deco art aisle with him, and I say, Order more pouring medium, order more <laughs> of this, that, and the other thing. So that's kind of like a, a built-in bonus. Yeah, Jess, connect, connect, connect. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, Nan uh, asked, when you teach, do you mix your paints uh, ahead of time or teach them to mix their own paint? It depends. If I do, I had to do two styles of classes. One is a fun class and no mixing. The other one is a learning workshop. And so they, they, they don't mix the majority of the paint that they use. They just learn how to mix so that they can leave there with the um, opportunity to be able to do this now on their own. The fun classes are usually shorter. They're about an hour and a half a piece. They're project oriented. They're more like a paint and sip kind of thing. Everything's pre-mixed. Yeah. And which one leads to the other and back and forth. And so I've had them go both directions on that one. Start in one and go to the other, right? So they did a really cool um, pour, you know, in a fun class. Then you know they're gonna they're gonna be coming back to a uh, 
full, you know, a half day workshop. Great question. Good. Um, oh, you, uh, so Nan, you were knocked out already. Okay. I don't wonder what's going on there. All right. Okay, Joyce asks, um, Casey, do you have to report the value and sponsorship product on your business income? No. Um, well, I certainly don't. Um, it's not income like it's a income to you. It's a uh, something that your business does. So that's very different than, um, uh, let's say that you won the lottery and the lottery or you won a car, you know, the car dealership. That's personally, if that goes to you, then that is the taxable, you know, on income. But this is going to your business, so it's different. Let me put on my disclosure that I am not a lawyer, and nor do I know or understand or pretend to <laughs> all of the different um, legalities that is everywhere in the world. So I am telling you from my perspective, based on my experience, not trying to give legal advice. There's my disclaimer. <laughs> all right. Uh, that is a good question, though. All right. And so Gina says, can't wait to watch the replays. Yeah, so hurry. You've got a week. And then they evaporate. All right. I don't see any more questions on here. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and sign off because we have been going for a solid 50 minutes. If you guys have any additional questions, feel free to add them um, into the chat line. And congratulations, Nan, again, uh, our winner. And so send me that uh, private message and... Uh, Really great to see you guys. I'll see you for the last one tomorrow. Remember, uh, hit that link. Go join our uh, the new membership community. Uh, it's going to be a blast, and it's going to be really accelerate your business opportunity, okay? So this is Casey Cole Corbin with Dynamic Fluid Art Coaching. Have a great day. See you tomorrow at 3.